In the Lord of the Rings Online, and any MMO for that matter really, I love playing and leveling alt, and for some of my favorite classes, I really like to have them available to progress through high level and end game content. However, for the past few years, there has been this really big hurdle for my characters and Lotro that made getting to the high levels quite burdensome, and it made the journey towards the end game content significantly less fun and less exciting. So the way you acquire your trait points has probably been my least favorite part of Lotro since the trait system revamp way back in Helm's Deep in 2013, which then required you to complete a whole bunch of deeds and especially at higher levels now, you had to complete specific quest lines, region deeds, and certain book quests to get your trait points. Now these pieces of content never felt optional or skippable even when the game presented you with alternatives because while well, getting your trait points is very important to your character progression and really building your character out how you like to better define your role in the game and really how powerful you are. Now, I will say doing the specific content to get trait points once for a main character was actually not bad at all, but where the problems really started to shine through was when I would level alts. Because Lotro is a game where there are many, many alternative leveling paths, I really hated feeling forced to always choose like one specific path just because it was the efficient or even the only way to get my trait points to progress my character. So the result of this is that I would not level characters past kind of the mid levels because at that point in the game, particularly starting with West Rohan around level 85, I was actually not looking forward to leveling from there and beyond. And if I'm not looking forward to leveling or otherwise not enjoying the journey, then I had to ask myself, what is the point? Well, if you have seen my content the past few years, there is evidently no point in that, and what we do see is that I have all of these characters that have just been abandoned because they are either very weak due to choosing those alternative leveling methods that don't get you trait points, or I would just stop playing them because progression became too boring. And the seemingly like minor aspect of Lotron, how you get your trait points, has actually had a very major and real impact on how I play the game and even how often, how much I play Lotro. On top of that, it is something that I have been critical about in numerous videos, which I'm sure many of you have also seen. So that is the context and story for why this minor detail in the Before the Shadow expansion patch for Lotro is the single biggest and to me one of the most important changes to the game in many years. Starting with update 34, you will only get trait points from leveling. And that means no more worrying about class deeds, no more worrying about class quests, no more worrying about zone deeds, no more reputation barters, epic battles, zone quest lines, epic quests, book quests, and I'm running out of figures to list thing. You don't have to worry about those things during your journey leveling in Lotro. And really, I think this change will just bring the character progression to be in line with player expectations and other MMOs because you can progress the core of your character's class and spec through the building with that just through leveling. I think the system will be a lot more appealing to new players, but also will majorly benefit current players like me. And it is honestly just going to be a sigh of relief, I think, for currently leveling characters. And it will also benefit endgame characters who may not have run like all the content and are left without all their trait points, resulting in a kind of underbuilt character. I know I have run into this. And really, I see this change probably being most impactful for those characters and the casual types of players who may not worry so much about things like getting their trait points. It will be a pretty nice boost for those players and group content as well by giving them a little bit more equal footing in terms of the trait points that they have available. So with all this, I think we can agree that the benefits for Lotro players are resounding. A little bit more specific to me, this little line in the patch notes will lead to what I am dubbing the great unabandoning where I will unabandon or resurrect all of my characters that have been left by the wayside due to the clash trait points issue. This great unabandoning will start with my classic characters on Arkenstone. Some of them are in better shape than others, but the highlights are like my original lore master who is very weak at level 120, my original captain who has actually struggled past level 105, and I also have a level 116 champion who I just have had no motivation to play even though he made it out of Mordor alive. 
I should also point out though that the LI system revamp makes unabandoning these characters even more possible because they did not actually progress that far into the old imbued LI system. And if you remember that old system, you will know characters were very, very weak if they did not progress through that. But even with the LI revamp that pretty much fixed that issue completely, I was still left with very little reason to play these characters and now it was solely due to trait points, which is going to actually be a similar story for my original Warden and Runekeeper who were essentially replaced by Valar boosted characters who actually did have the proper number of trait points. So while these classic characters are significant to my past Lotro playtime, I nowadays play more so on Langevall since my Anor can transfer there with the whole server closure and all that. But I think this is where the Great Unabandoning will have the biggest impact on my playtime moving forward. So you all know that minstrel that I have been leveling and honestly have been having a ton of fun on. Well, I have said multiple times throughout the journey that that reality with that character is that he will be abandoned in Rohan because I just don't want to do those quests and even further like quests and deeds past Rohan just to get his trait points to feel like he's actually properly progressed for his level. Well, that will be no more because I am actually excited that I feel like I can level him past Rohan now. That abandoned fate is exactly what happened to my guardian though. While I did end up boosting her to level 105 with a Valar, before that she was abandoned in Rohan just left in Wildermore to rot because I was not going to go through all the specific content to get trade points. The good news now though, I feel like I can play her now and kind of ironically, I'm actually excited to quest through Mordor on her. Heck, I'd even enjoy doing content that you used to have to do for trait points just because my mind can now focus on enjoying the journey and the content rather than only worrying about getting the trait points. Maybe even West Rohan can become my new favorite zone. <laughs> How about my level 100-ish Runekeeper? He actually went through West Rohan, Central Gondor, and parts of Volume 4 to get trait points, but I honestly just couldn't do any more on him and he became abandoned. Now his future fate actually is not so bright and he has been replaced by the wonderfully named Louis 7 a Valar Runekeeper, but at least now the door is open to leveling him in the future, whereas before it was just completely closed really. And then what if we look at some of my even lower level characters? I have a uh, captain, hunter, lore master, champion, burglar, all of those are somewhere around or near the level 40 to 50 range. So for a good portion of these characters, I could not even motivate myself to start Moria, which is why they don't have their allies and their levels pretty low. They were actually largely going to be forever Eriador children. The future outlook for them though is much brighter. Maybe they can actually grow up, which is exciting. And really with all this, you can probably tell that this change is just opening up a lot of exciting possibilities. While I will admit there was some sense of accomplishment and satisfaction with certain ways of earning trait points, such as the class deeds, class quests, and class books, notice all those have class in the word, we do lose something that was sometimes even enjoyable with those. But I still think that the positives by far outweigh any of the cons of this trait points change. Additionally, I do think it should be relatively easy for SSG to replace the trait point rewards with new meaningful rewards from deeds, uh, quests, etc. all this stuff. They can replace that with things like virtue XP, cool gear pieces, LI resources, and just a lot more, but that burden is on them at this point. Ultimately though, I am looking forward to this new era of character progression and leveling in Lotro. Let me know in the comments what you all think of this update and how it will impact your character leveling experience. I hope you all did enjoy this video and if you did please consider liking and subscribing for more or becoming a channel member to support the content and the cat that is making noise back there and thanks for watching everyone.